Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Crystal, and in today's video, I'm gonna be spilling the coffee on caffeine. See what I did there? So I think it's important that we just, we should just talk about caffeine for a second, you know? Caffeine is so good, but equally, maybe not that great for hormone health. I don't know, we'll have to talk about it, and that's what this video is gonna be all about. So I'm gonna be talking about what caffeine is, the types of foods that have caffeine in them, some some issues that can come up if you consume too much caffeine or consume it for like really long periods of time, some symptoms to watch out for that might show that your caffeine consumption is negatively affecting you, as well as what to do about your caffeine consumption if you are struggling with some symptoms and you're not really sure where to go from there. Should you give it up? Should you decrease it? What should you do? So let's start off with talking about caffeine. What is is it? So caffeine is a central nervous stimulant. So basically what that means is it makes you feel more energized. It is stimulating. And caffeine is the most freely marketed drug out there in the world. It's classified as a psychoactive substance, which is really interesting when you think about it compared to other psychoactive substances. And the reason why it is very addictive is because the amount needed to elicit a response in your body actually will start to grow the more that you use caffeine. So if you have like one cup of coffee every day, after a little while, you're probably not gonna feel the effects of it. So you're gonna wanna start drinking more and then you'll wanna start drinking more and then more and more and more. And so you'll start to build the tolerance up to it. And then after a while, it'll actually feel like you need it to function. So <laughs> that sounds really scary, <laughs> uh, but thankfully like caffeine is like relatively safe and a dose of about 50 to 100 milligrams, which is usually what you would find in one cup of coffee, will elicit a response. So you'll feel like heightened mental clarity, you'll have an increase of energy levels, and you'll also probably feel less tired. And that's kind of the reasons why a lot of people enjoy caffeine, um, especially in coffee, because it does give you these benefits. And I'm not here to talk crap on coffee. Coffee's been shown time and time again to have antioxidants in it. It's been shown to actually be protective for some health conditions. Like there's a lot of good in coffee, but then the caffeine can kind of cause some issues in some people. And that's kind of what I'm talking about today. And so coffee is not the only source of caffeine. Tea, like black tea and green tea also have caffeine. Usually the caffeine in both of those is a bit lower than you would find in like a cup of coffee. There's also caffeine found in caffeinated sodas and beverages. There's also caffeine found in energy drinks. So energy drinks is like a big source of caffeine for a lot of people. There's also a little bit of caffeine found in chocolate and cacao. And of course there is synthetic caffeine and caffeine that is found in medication. So there's some pain relievers that are combined with caffeine because caffeine in some people can be of benefit for when they are struggling with pain. And then synthetic caffeine is usually used in like supplements and that kind of thing. When I was doing research for this video, I found some synthetic caffeine supplements had up to 200 milligrams of caffeine in them, which would like really elicit a response in you. And a lot of times these supplements would be used for people who are like working out. But I still wanted to include those in this video because caffeine intake can come from like a variety of different sources in your diet. You know, it's not just coffee. There's a lot of other sources you can get caffeine as well. There's a lot of ways that caffeine uh, can affect the body. And you know, some of that would be positive. For example, if you're looking for more energy and stuff and you're an athlete, a lot of athletes will take like caffeine supplements or that kind of thing to produce that response. A lot of people enjoy having their cup of coffee in the morning because it makes them feel mentally clear, less dry drowsy, feeling really good. But the reason why these feelings happen is because there's a lot of things going on in your body. The biggest issue when it comes to hormones is how caffeine can affect blood sugar as well as your stress hormones. So when you intake caffeine, you can potentially have issues with blood sugar regulation. Caffeine can essentially worsen blood sugar sensitivity, which means that you might have higher blood sugars. Blood sugar usually rises when you have food and then it will slowly like stabilize throughout the day depending on what you're eating or it could go like this if you're not eating like fiber rich foods or that kind of thing. But with caffeine, caffeine can um, initially possibly drop blood sugar levels and then rise them up, which isn't great for your hormone. It's not great. Having stable blood sugar levels is 
so good for your hormones. And if your blood sugar is kind of like this throughout the day, like up and down, that's gonna cause some problems. That is potentially what can happen if you're intaking a lot of caffeine, especially throughout the day. Uh, caffeine can also contribute to sugar cravings because of this like blood sugar kind of fluctuation. And we all know that like processed sugar is not the best thing to be having. You know, treats are okay, but if you're constantly having sugar cravings and you are just eating like really high sugar foods, that can also affect your hormones. Uh, and then of course it impacts your blood sugar as well and insulin. And so that's kind of like the main issue with caffeine. Some people metabolize caffeine a lot better than others. So you might be really great at metabolizing caffeine and you might not notice any of these feelings. Like you might have caffeine and feel completely fine, normal, nothing. Or you might be a slow metabolizer which means that caffeine is in your body for a lot longer and can potentially have some effects. And that's usually what happens when people are having symptoms after having caffeine is usually they're slow metabolizers, but we'll get into the symptoms a little bit later, but I still wanna talk a little bit about how caffeine also affects the body in the way that it can raise cortisol and adrenaline levels. Cortisol is a stress hormone. When you are in times of stress, cortisol will increase. And for a lot of us, our cortisol is like always pumping because we are really stressed out. Work relationships, kids, everything is so stressful, the whole world right now, like everything is so stressful. Even though you might not think that way, your body's different, right? Our body picks up on different cues and our body's very sensitive. And so caffeine can actually raise cortisol levels and adrenaline, that's kind of how it works, that's how it kind of gives you energy. So with that being said, people who don't have caffeine regularly often have more of a cortisol rise and adrenaline rise. People who have caffeine often, usually after a while, your cortisol and adrenaline just kind of get used to the caffeine so they don't really spike as much as they probably would if you were just having it like you know not as regular but that's still a little worrisome but you don't want to have like these spikes all the time and you definitely don't want your body to kind of just get get used to caffeine because what happens is that you then end up drinking more caffeine to elicit the response you know a cup of coffee a day whatever but after a while that's not going to be enough for you to have that response that you're looking for like your energy not, might not be high you might feel still drowsy after you have coffee for people who are longtime drinkers of coffee and they have to drink more and more and more to get the response you can imagine kind of like how your body is dealing with that and it's probably not dealing with it that well and of course with that, all that being said the more caffeine that you do drink you're more prone to having symptoms or having these issues right blood sugar issues or maybe cortisol issues some of the really common symptoms of having a lot of caffeine or just being very sensitive to caffeine would be anxiety Anxiety, nervousness, insomnia is a huge, huge side effect of caffeine. And I think it's really easy to think, well, I'm having coffee like in the morning at like eight o'clock. Like it's not affecting my sleep, but it can because the half-life of caffeine is like six hours. So if you are a slow metabolizer, it's gonna be in your body probably a lot longer. And so that can affect your sleep. I know for me, if I have coffee early in the morning, it doesn't really matter how early it is. I still feel like I have a hard time going to sleep. That's just because the caffeine is still in my system. Restless legs and fatigue are also signs and symptoms of uh, having a lot of caffeine in your body not really dealing with it that well. Other symptoms are like headaches, heartburn. Heartburn is a huge symptom that a lot of people don't attribute to their caffeine intake. Another symptom might be like low iron levels and that's usually from uh, drinking a lot of coffee or tea because these have tannins in them. If you're anemic or having iron deficiency issues and you're drinking a lot of tea or coffee even if they're not caffeinated they could still be affecting absorption of iron. So that's another issue to worry about. And of course, high blood pressure and high cholesterol as well as triglycerides has been attributed to intake of caffeine. And so again, if you're having struggle with that and you're having a lot of caffeine, it could be correlated. So with all of that being said, like what should you do? So I'm a big believer in just being very intuitive about things. I think we know when things are affecting us and sometimes it can be really hard to be okay with that. I know for me, I enjoy coffee. I really like the taste of it. Um, it's so delicious. But I started to notice that I wasn't sleeping very well at night. Uh, I started to notice that I was having these sugar cravings or that my blood sugar did not feel as stable throughout the day. I just didn't feel, feel my best. And as soon as I started to take caffeine out of my diet and switch to either decaf or just not having it, it was, it's like completely night and day. I still, I enjoy having a cup of coffee from time to time, but I also know how it makes me feel. And so I'm kind of a lot more conscious with it now. I think you know from watching this if you should break up with coffee 
or caffeine in general. Like, you, you know. And so I'm not here to tell you what to do, but I'm here to offer some tips on how to like navigate this relationship. So something that I recommend doing is if you are really struggling with symptoms and having issues is to like slowly taper off of caffeinated beverages. If you do it cold turkey, you could have issues with headaches, kind of like withdrawal like symptoms, depending on how much caffeine that you are having. So I definitely recommend doing like a slow taper. If you're not into that and you're like, I'm not giving up my cup of coffee a day, then just make sure that you're having it like before noon. You wanna make sure that you are just having coffee in the early part of the day, especially if it's caffeinated, obviously if it's caffeinated, you just want to be able to like metabolize that before you go to bed. Hopefully that will help. If you're still finding that you're having like insomnia and stuff, then it's probably best to maybe taper off and reduce your consumption or switch to decaf. Decaf is always a great option. I'd suggest if you're going to try like decaf coffee, try to get it like the Swiss water press method. Another really great thing you can do to help your body handle caffeine a little bit better is to have it with food. That can make a really big difference um, and should help your blood sugar levels like not have like a huge spike and stuff like that. Just try it and see how it feels, but I definitely recommend that. I don't recommend just um, having a bunch of coffee on an empty stomach. I also recommend that if you wanna try something that tastes like coffee, but isn't coffee, because coffee is a slippery slope for you, <laughs> try herbal like replacements like Dandy Blend. Dandy Blend is a really popular coffee substitute. So that might be a nice option for you. And then of course you could switch to herbal teas as well, which don't have any caffeine in them. And you know, if you're like me and you enjoy coffee you can have it every now and then just do what feels right it's okay to realize when your relationship with it maybe isn't serving you in the best way and so that's why I wanted to create this video I just wanted to create this to have a little bit more awareness of how caffeine could potentially negatively impact your body what to do about it and to also just be mindful of your intake if you are going to try to stop having caffeine and taper off just know that it takes about three months to start to see like the positive benefits because caffeine can stay in your body for a while so if you have any period issues or blood sugar issues or uh, stress or any issues that you think might be worsened by caffeine intake try to stay off of it for about three months to see if it actually makes a difference. Hopefully you learned something in this video. As always, your cycle matters so much and I'm here for you. And I really, really appreciate you watching this and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.